Five things you didn't expect to see in manufactured homes these days. Faux electronic fireplaces. USB outlets. Stainless steel sink. This is a farm, a farm sink? Why do they call it that? It was pretty I, traditional back in, in farms where you wouldn't mess up the cabinetry because this was always a wet area. So it was a pot faucet right above the flat top. That's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Wow, the rain shower tub. That's gorgeous. And this is a, you said ultimate? We call it an ultimate bath. Ultimate bath. All right, this is a bonus one. It's hard to tell, but look at the size of this walk-in closet. It's got a bench right here, huge mirror. I mean, this is crazy. This is almost bigger than my bedroom. John Fedro here, got Ryan, Steven, Dan, and Greg right here. We're gonna to tour a Redmond facility here. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> now we have these coverings over our eyes and that is uh, safety first. Yes, it is. Um, it's, more, it's more significant. When the plane yeah, I mean, that's the buying power, the volume that we buy things at allows us to get the best price for those materials. Now, now we're in Phoenix right now. Do you ship mostly to the Southwest? Because of the location? Yes, there's five states. Um, Arizona, of course, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and California. And we're probably shipping, I would guess, 60% of everything we do to California. The one thing about manufactured homes that's interesting is it's federal code. So that allows you to move a home from state to state, as long as you stay in the same zone ratings. Um, Site-built homes and modular homes, which factories can build modular as well, you're dealing with the International Residential Code, which is state and county controlled. Okay. We couldn't build a home, most likely, to meet the wind load requirements in the southeast because of tornadoes or the Midwest, some of those places, because it's just not a part of our region. We never have to worry about that high of a wind load. But we have snow load requirements uh, that we have to build to in Colorado. So we regionally are in a position to respond quickly to a customer who's in a snow load requirement that we can, re that, you know, we can build to where a Texas plant would never even have the idea of how to get a rafter engineered to do that. And that's why you were mentioning you have now 20 uh, factories around the country yeah. to service all these unique right. areas and needs. And right. Needs. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's good. Now, has that, has that grown? I mean, you, we hear doom and gloom about the manufacturing. Oh, industry. my gosh. This is a great time. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm an optimist, kind of <laughs> an optimist, I guess. But we, in 20 years, I have, you respond to market conditions, but you're dealing with a different client. So let me give you my two cents. We were able to see a different client coming in when economic conditions were lower. For example, Somebody who would have built on site, now that the economy has dipped, is not building on site, they're buying a manufactured home or a modular home because that's what they can afford and they still need housing. We're building 18, what we call a floor is a single module. So a double section home is two floors and a triple is three single. So we're building 18 floors a week. Generally speaking, it's a very, the, the way everything's laid out is to allow for easy access, uh, everything is able to be done generally without ladders. There's catwalks throughout here, some really cool things that prevent uh, injury. And We're assembling the roof. Uh, we lay the sheetrock down first, and that's where all those larger pieces of sheetrock are coming in. They're all laid down, then the trusses are put in place, but then it's glued. You can see the glue here. So what we're looking at is the top of the ceiling. Yes, this will be full of insulation right when it gets over to that section. They just spray the cell cellulose insulation? Yeah, eventually over there. Okay. Right now, we're going to lift it up and put it over into this bay where we're going next. And that's where we finish the, sh the, the taping and texturing of the ceiling. So a 312 roof pitch is 3 feet of height for 12 feet of run. So this is a probably, um, probably a 212 roof pitch on this particular home. 
So as the home gets wider, if it's a 32 wide, it's going to be a little shallower because this peak can't go um, up any higher and not compromise the shipping height. Hmm. It also could be related to the fact that we can do nine foot sidewalls. If you have nine foot sidewalls, that also compromises the pitch. But now we have underslung axles that allow the home to sit lower because the axle sits uh, tucked into the frame instead of below it like a typical frame. Oh, I'd love to see axle. that. So it's a lot of engineering and creative things that have hmm. allowed us to be more competitive in the marketplace. There's hundreds of man hours on a home at any given time. How many people work here at once? 105, 110 right now. Is there any particular reason why most manufactured home uh, manufacturers uh -huh. um, do texturing on the ceilings, um, like popcorn ceiling? As they don't do anymore. Smooth. Very few do. I mean, it, that definitely is a dated thing, and you would maybe find some of that in Texas on some very entry level. But the reason it was done, this is my opinion. I, I think it's accurate. It would hide a multitude of sins. You could spray it on thick. You wouldn't have to necessarily have your sheetrock perfectly match up because you wouldn't see it. It just is one? an incredible amount of. Uh, it, it just it has an incredible amount of uh, strength that it adds to every joint. Okay. We'll and so it. every joint, you're going to see this fish plate uh, sandwiching it in to add the strength that you need at a joint. And that's industry. That's trust, and these come with pre-engineered trusses. Oh, they do? Yeah. They so just th come. These are purchased oh, right. and brought in. And so that is uh, part of the uh, design that has to be able to accomplish the snow load that it's rated for. Any waste. I mean, when you think of green construction, this is the epitome of green construction. Very little waste. Well, one of the things that's going on here is, again, we're, uh, we're trying to get everything ready for that floor over there to support the outside walls being already pre-built. So everything is done with these cranes to pick them up, haul them over, set them down. Same with this crane system that's going to pick up the roof system and haul it over and set it down at the appropriate time. We're now going to go back to where it all starts. Behind this black uh, canopy area is where all the welding is going on, where the framing is built uh, from raw steel. It's all being welded. Axles and tires are being installed on it. Building here, axles are using a crane to flip it and allow uh, them you know, easy access to the things that they're doing. It actually goes out that door, goes around the factory, and comes in this other door for the home floor to be uh, craned on top of it. And that's right over here? Right over, that's where we're headed now. So just to give you another feel for the size of this facility, this whole area back in the back is staging of materials also. The fact that we're buying this much lumber, we have to have a place to stage it from. Uh, we're making our own heat ducts here, and all that's being done down here where we're able to get the raw materials and do our own. What's the point of doing that in-house? In just uh, to get it sized correctly, because every home is going to need a little different length. And it's going to be installed here. So one of the neat things about this uh, is it's a double uh, attached floor. And then they roll each of the, uh, the top of each floor joist with glue. And then they set their decking on and then they nail it. So that it's, the glue is there to keep any um, movement in this decking, which is what causes a squeak. But to secure it, then they're gonna use the nail on top of it. We can build. We could. We can build up to 76 feet long. So this home could have had plenty more living space and the deck. This is the cabinet shop. We do everything here, except install the doors because we don't want to damage the door or the cabinet in the process. So the car the carcass of the cabinet is built here and loaded into the house where it's real easy now without having to go through doors and such. So uh, this is the part where it starts being assembled with cabinets. Countertops are here. You'll see the seats already assembled so that the plumber isn't crawling under the, under the uh, sink to install it. It's already pre-installed. And now we're at a point where you're seeing the floor decking is being prepped for vinyl. Everywhere that's uh, getting vinyl gets sanded. 
again, I think an, an example of the quality of um, that mid to upper end builder where you won't see this in an entry level builder. They're going to use a rollout vinyl. But if you ever damage that rollout vinyl, it's really tough to make a repair. Uh, so if there's ever a point where this gets damaged, you can heat this up, loosen the glue, and then re-adhere re a new tile to it. So one of the cool things about this in comparing it to site built is a site built home is built from the outside in. You're getting it dried in, you're putting siding on, shingling it, you're getting it all done, and then you start building the, the house from the inside. Well, we're, we basically build the house from the inside out. And so the last thing, we can do this sort of thing. We can put our siding on last. We can make sure it's all completely tight before we put siding on, but only because we're under the big top. Where does this size model go? Because this is a huge home. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's, a, it's a single wide based on the roof line. It would go into a mobile home park. It's a 16 by 80. It's 1,178 square feet or thereabouts. Wow. Now you said you do up to 76, I thought. This is the biggest. Okay. Yeah. 76 on the inside. Oh, I'm sorry. It's outside wall to outside wall 76. Oh. The overall shipping length with the tongue and the eave makes it 80. Great point. Trying to catch me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you see a catwalk between each one. When it gets to the end of this line, they lift the catwalk up and crane it all the way over the top of it and then set it back down in place <laughs> where it's needed for the next one. Uh, to crane this thing basically, uh, to move every home down in, in position, you just chain it on and then you, they start to sound an alarm, you'll see these chains just going oh, on the floor, but it's cool. pulling the modules down these uh, tracks. Wow. You have briefings every day or this is a... Yeah, Yes. It was really, it was really fascinating. It was a really unique chance to, to see something like this. Right. Yeah. Great, special, yeah. much better than the How It's Made episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank you so much again. Yeah, right. pleasure. Pleasure. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. It was entertaining. You learned a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please comment them below. Uh, visit uh, the website for the Redmond facility there in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, also, Division of Champion Mobile Homes. Really cool. Uh, thank you to Greg, our awesome tour guide, and everyone else at that facility for making this video possible. I hope you like this video. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.